If you're like me, you keep up with technology news and you're always seeing stories about things like, oh, this, we got this stolen laptop back thanks to this embedded GPS unit, or we, we tracked this car across country thanks to GPS unit, or this robot drove itself thanks to a GPS unit. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to hook up an OEM GPS unit that's highly customizable. You can use it in anything from a robotics project to anything you can imagine. And the great thing about this guy is that you're not just hooking up one sensor, you're actually getting three because you can read your GPS position, you can read your velocity, and you also get a compass heading out of this. The only downfall is that you have to be in range um, of a satellite so that your antenna can pick it up, which normally means you have to be outside. The unit I'm demonstrating today is the Garmin GPS 15L. It's a 3.3 to 5 volt version. You can also get the H, which is an 8 to 40 volt version. I'm using this because I'm going to use it in a small robotics project. Um, so the great thing about this unit too is that a lot of the other hobbyist GPS units you'll find will hook up the exact same way this one does. Um, and I'm going to show you how to hook it up to a computer so that you can test it and start working with it. Um, so I'm going to use just some really common components. Uh, 9 volt battery, a 5 volt voltage regulator, and a serial port and a cable. And that's really all you need. And if you don't have a serial port, you can use a, a serial port to USB converter, which will convert it pretty easy. And that you can pick up at Radio Shack or a hobby store too. So, come on, let's go hook it up. Okay, so let's put this guy together. So we'll start with our breadboard. Um, first thing I'm going to hook up is the voltage regulator. And something to point out about this guy is that there's an input, the middle pin is normally a ground, and then there's the output. So you put in whatever your voltage source is. We're going to put 9 volts in here and get out around 5 volts. And here's the ground. So something you might be thinking is, well, wait a second, I don't have all these parts and I can sympathize with you because the first time I hooked up this GPS unit I just used a Tupperware container. And you can really just string all this wire together. Uh, a breadboard is just a nice nice thing to be able to use. So next thing I'm going to hook up is a serial port and there's a really great um, diagram in the manual for the GPS unit. And this is just transmit, receive, and then I've marked the ground with a little black mark here the ground or the um, negative. So we want to put this guy in the middle. Okay, then we'll put these out here for the transmit and the receive. And now, on the GPS unit, there's only four wires that we're interested in. There's positive, negative, transmit, and receive. And for just testing it, that's all we're interested in. That's really all I've ever used in my robotics applications as well. So let's make sure we've got it grounded. Okay. Now I'm going to put the red for the GPS unit in the power output. Whoops. This is the output. So this is where we want the 5 volt out from our voltage regulator. And then the transmit and receive, I'm going to hook up to our two serial port wires. And it doesn't matter if these are reversed. I mean, you'll be able to tell when you're actually looking at the diagram which is which but you can just switch them, it's not a big deal, even while we're testing it on the computer. So next thing we need to do is we need to add our battery. We want the battery's power positive to be going to the input of the voltage regulator. So this is all kind of uh, complicated, I guess you could say, but it really isn't. Just the input from the 9 volt battery goes into the voltage regulator. This is the ground. There's three hooked to this. There's a serial port ground, the GPS unit ground, and our battery ground. 
and then that power output, which will be 5 volts, is just going to the GPS unit. So, and then all you have to do is hook up your battery and you can test it. All I'm going to do here, this is Fedora Core, but many versions of Linux come with this nifty little program. There's a console program called Minicom, and basically all it does is it starts, it automatically opens a serial port, and we're not getting anything. It'll start spewing out the data here. So the first thing we want to do, we want to switch our blue and yellow wire, the transmit and receive, and see what happens. And after I switch the wires, it's really spewing out all this data, so you know, yeah, it's working. So we've tested on Linux and now we need to test it on Windows. So let's just open up. What you need to do is go to Accessories, um, Communications, Hyperterminal. And if Hyperterminal isn't installed on your system, you can install it from the Windows install CD. And then what we're going to do is we're going to configure the port. Um, and the default baud rate is 4800. Turn everything else off. And then we'll just connect to the device and there you can see it going. So I've shown you how to hook up and test an OEM GPS unit on Linux and Windows. So what's the next step? Well for Windows you can poke around on SourceForge and there's a lot of really cool programs. Um, for Linux I would recommend a program called GPS Drive which is free and you can use it to do in-car navigation just with what I've shown you how to do here today. Um, and there's also on my website technogumbo.net I have a Java application and all the source code available that I use to autonomously navigate a robot using GPS coordinates. And that'll show you how to do a lot of things like read the data into a computer, um, what calculations you need to do for autonomous GPS navigation. So I hope you enjoy them and have fun with your new unit. Talk to you soon.